This is the TSG Multimedia Podcast for November 2019. We're sponsored this month by Podomatic, Trainlife.com, and the TSG Train Crew on Patreon. Thank you very much. I'm your host, John Abaticola. Just when I thought things would calm down a bit, October came along with quite a bit of activity, including a trip to Colorado, of all places. Real quick, uh, before I get to that, I just want to say, if you've been thinking about signing up on Patreon to support the channel, this is a great time to do it. Your support gets you access to previews, behind-the-scenes information, and exclusive content. I think there's value in promoting model railroading and preserving history, and your support helps make that happen. There's something else about Patreon that I really want to to mention to you. After seeing some comments that were posted to the YouTube videos that were basically complaining about the amount of ads shown, I decided to sit down and I watched the channel myself for a while a few days ago. I don't usually do this because I simply don't have the time to watch. Well, I was kind of surprised at how many ads showed up. Now, ads on YouTube are kind of a blessing and a curse at the same time. The revenue they generate, while not terribly impressive, helps keep the lights on here, but I have literally no control over which advertisers place ads on the videos. So one of my long-term goals is to turn off the ads so that everyone can watch the videos without interruption. This is really important to me because the only control I have is to turn the ads on or off. Once our Patreon support reaches a sufficient level, I'll turn off the YouTube ads completely. Ironically, the people who complain about the ads are not Patreon supporters. So here's the point. You can do something about the ads. You can support the channel for as little as two bucks a month. That's only about seven cents a day. As a matter of fact, in the time that it takes someone to post a comment complaining about the ads, you could just as easily sign up as a supporter to help make the ads go away. So the point to this story is just that. If you like the content here, but don't like the ads, go over to patreon.com slash TSG Multimedia and become part of the TSG train crew. Every support level comes with some kind of reward and every penny contributed goes toward the production of the content that you enjoy. You can even sign up for a custom amount if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page where you can choose your support level. Now, I mean, it's all the way at the bottom. It's a custom amount. It's easy. It doesn't cost much, and it helps everyone. So now on to some of the things that I've been up to for the past 30 days or so. So on October 5th, we went to the Sonora area for an event called Op Till You Drop. This is a series of operating sessions on John Zock's Sierra 1955 layout and Steve Hayes' Western Pacific layout. You can see layout tours of both of these layouts right here on the channel. So what they do is invite a bunch of people up for the entire weekend for several operating sessions on both layouts. When I got the invitation this year, I thought it would be cool to document it for the channel. Even though it's by invitation only, it's still a great example of what operating sessions are all about. And a video about it is coming to the channel in the near future. I want to thank Steve and John for the invitation and also all the operators who went on camera to talk about what they like about it and what they were doing at the op sessions. The next day, we went to the Amador County Model Railroad Museum. This is a somewhat smallish layout, and one of the really cool aspects of it is that they have a lot of young members. I want to thank Mike and Nick for the invitation, and also Graham, who happens to be a member at the SBHRS too, for appearing on the layout tour. It should end up being a good one, and it's most likely going to come out early next year. So unless you're new to the channel, you might have noticed that I seem to talk about youth in the hobby quite a bit, like I just did a second ago when I told you about Graham. I didn't even realize that I do this, but apparently other people did. 
And one of those people was the director of the Colorado Model Railroad Museum, Michelle Campama. I met Michelle at the NMRA National Convention last July. I've been pretty impressed with all the things they do at that museum to get children interested in the hobby. Well, we talked about that at the convention quite a bit. And I mentioned on the last podcast that we were going to Colorado, partly because we have a new top secret niece who was born in August that we wanted to meet. Well, I was also invited by Michelle to an event that was being held in Greeley, where the museum is. And this event was called Tracks to Success. More about that in just a minute. I want to tell you about the trip before the, the seminar first. So we arrived in Denver on the 15th, and then on the 16th, Michelle was nice enough to take us to Cheyenne, Wyoming, which is only about an hour away, where she introduced us to her friend, Mike Panel, who's involved with a lot of restoration projects on historic railroad equipment. The first one we got to see was on display in a park. It was the UP 4004 Big Boy locomotive. Mike went on camera to talk about the restoration project and showed us some really cool stuff around and actually in the locomotive. After grabbing some high quality fast food for lunch, we headed out to an old missile silo where Mike shared several more restoration projects that he's working on, including the oldest known Woodside Union Pacific caboose in existence. We ended the trip to Wyoming with a visit to the Wasatch Railroad Contractors Shop, which is the company that did the work on the big boy from the park that I mentioned a minute ago. I got to see the Hawaiian Railway Society's former Navy switcher that was being worked on there, but we weren't allowed to take any photos. This was quite a treat, and I really want to thank both Mike and Michelle for taking time out of their schedules to share this this experience with us. It was really cool, and it fits right in with what the channel's doing in the preservation of history aspect. The next day, we went to the Colorado Model Railroad Museum to record for a layout tour there. While we were there, we met Carl Debo, who's been a volunteer at the museum for a long time. Carl was nice enough to go on camera to share the highlights of the layout. It's quite large, and the museum itself is a must-see if you're ever near Denver. Greeley is just about an hour north of Denver, in case you're wondering, and you can expect to see Not only this really big layout, but also tons of real railroad artifacts as well. Our friend and TSG train crew member Alvin Gilbert drove all the way out from Salt Lake City to join us that evening. You might remember Alvin because we did some live videos from his living room back in July during the NMRA National Convention Week, including one where we built a a fan-driven paint booth. So on Friday, we attended the Tracks to Success event that I just talked about a minute ago. It was attended by about 30 people from half a dozen states or so. And we discussed the future of the hobby and ideas about how to encourage more young people to get involved. The ultimate goal of this movement is to create what we're calling a scalable program or series of programs that can be implemented by organizations really of any size to provide kids the opportunity to experience what scale modeling has to offer. So I I think it's an excellent goal. And I also think that providing complete programs like this will help organizations all over the country and maybe all over the world to encourage young people to get interested in the hobby. And I think that's good for the kids and it's also good for the hobby as well. So I'm pretty excited about that. Saturday was pretty fun also. Alvin, Sydney, and Michelle and I went on a short trip down to Denver to check out some of the train stuff around the area. Of course, I had the cameras rolling, so you can expect to see an episode of Chasing Trains from that day on the channel sometime soon. We looked at some rail yards from overpasses, and we also went to a place I'd never been to, the Forney Transportation Museum, and we also went to the Colorado Railroad Museum in Golden. Like I said before, I'd never been to the Forney Museum, but now that I've been there, I can tell you that you also have to see this place. They have hundreds of unusual cars, 
trucks, motorcycles, aircraft, and, and railroad equipment too, including the 4005, yet another big boy that's on static display there in the museum. I've been to the Railroad Museum in Golden before and really liked it, so it was great to return, and it was especially great to watch how much Alvin enjoyed it. At the end of the day, we parted ways. Alvin ended up going down to Durango to go hang out with George Brogatuck and the next day, and then we went to Estes Park to hang out with our in-laws. The rest of this trip was spent for us in and around Estes Park with relatives, like I said before, and I have to thank Michelle for the invitation and for taking as much time out of her schedule as she did to help make our visit really great. And also, I want to thank Alvin, who's always up for whatever. He even drove over a thousand miles on his trip to come hang out with his friends. And what a great time it was. Super uh, great highlight of the year that uh, I'm sure we'll all remember for a long time. Last Saturday, I volunteered at Ardenwood for the SPCRR's Haunted Train event. The SPCRR is the same group that puts on the rail fair event at Ardenwood that I've talked about on the channel before. I helped by working the ticket office with Jack, and then I recorded the train ride for future training use by the group. We had our second TSG Live Crew Lounge stream on Sunday from the SBHRS. That was this past Sunday. It was a discussion about prototype, protolance, and freelance approaches to model railroading. If you missed it, don't worry, because the live streams that we do are viewable anytime after the event as well. Uh, the benefit to being on when the broadcast is on is that you can offer your own questions or comments for consideration by the uh, panel. And I'm really having a great time bringing these shows to the channel. And I want to thank all the panelists that have been on and who will be on for sharing their knowledge and time with us in order to promote the hobby. Something else I thought was really cool is that someone remarked that there's no one else anywhere on YouTube putting on shows like this. And I hadn't really thought of that before, but I think it's right. I don't think I've seen anything like it on YouTube or really anywhere else for that matter that can be viewed by thousands of people. If you think it's a cool or worthwhile concept that could even be uh, the excuse for you, uh, that you need to become a Patreon supporter. See, I had to work that in somehow. As I'm recording this for the podcast, I have a couple more events to attend this week, and I'm sure I'll tell you about them in December's podcast. One of them is a visit to David Griffey's layout to see what he has going on. I was introduced to Griffey by Murph, who's a regular at that layout, and actually Murph helped work on some stuff there as well. So the other event I'm going to is something I told you about last year. Do you remember that crazy Halloween event in Santa Cruz at the Fern Creek in Western? They're doing it again, and there's no way I'll miss that. I always enjoy visiting with Eric and Trevor and Paul, and I haven't decided what kind of video to make or even if I'll be making a video this year, but no matter what, I'm sure we'll have a good time visiting. We always do. I want to mention all the stuff you can get in the TSG swag store on Teespring. I always mention Teespring because it's one more way that you can support the programs you like to watch here on the channel, and while you're at it, you can get some really cool stuff for yourself at the same time. So there's a bunch of products you can use from coffee mugs to clothing, like t-shirts, hoodies, tank tops, to shopping bags, phone cases, and stickers. Just There's all kinds of stuff on there. If you're watching on a computer, just click on one of the links below the screen here and check out what's there. It's another way you can help me bring the programs that you like to the channel, and come to think of it, a lot of these things could make really great Christmas presents, either for yourself or for someone that you know who likes train stuff. So I want to take a quick moment to remind you that November has a ton of events all over the place for you to get out and have some railroad-related fun. I can think of several holiday-themed train events as well as open house events that you can attend if you just do a Google search for organizations in your area. 
One of those events in my area is happening right now, today and tomorrow, at the South Bay Historical Railroad Society. It's the SBHRS Fall Open House. And I have said this before many times, and I'll say it again many times. This is one of the best events in the entire Bay Area when it comes to railroad-related and kid-friendly events. They have a company store with thousands of items from models to books and just all kinds of stuff for sale. It all goes to support the organization. The layouts are all cleaned up and have trains running throughout the event. The interlocking tower is open for tours as well as the business car they're restoring. And like I said a minute ago, it's a kid-friendly event and it's just a great event overall. So get out to the SBHRS if you're in the area. It's from 10 to 5 today and then from 10 to 4 tomorrow. If you're in the area, I really hope you can make it. I have some important announcements to make with the upcoming schedule, so let's get to that now. This Wednesday, the 6th, we have a layout tour remaster. On Friday, I have a special preview of Atherne's upcoming release of the Union Pacific SD70 Ace numbered 1111. There's some controversy with the real locomotive. Rail fans love it, but a lot of furloughed UP employees aren't so fond of it. No matter what you think about the real one, the model's really cool and it has a really neat paint job. So thanks to Chris Palomares for letting me preview the model and share it with you here on the channel. One of the highlights of this show is that we were able to run it on the layout at the Colorado Model Railroad Museum to get some run-by shots. This guy was the engineer and he even brought his 1943 unit to double head with the 1111. I think he had a good time. Next Saturday, the 9th, it's the Southern Pacific Santa Rosalia layout tour with Tony Thompson. Tony's a well-known Southern Pacific historian and author whose layout is pretty small in size, but huge in operational opportunities. You'll see what I mean when you watch the video. Then on Wednesday, the 13th, we have another layout tour remaster coming out. On the 16th, it's Chasing Trains in Niles Canyon featuring the reintroduction of Southern Pacific Krauss Maffei Hydraulic Locomotive number 9010. If you like chasing trains, you won't want to miss this because it has a cast of some of my favorite all-star celebrities and plenty of shots of this very unusual piece of Southern Pacific history. On Sunday the 17th, it's the next installment of TSG Live Crew Lounge. In this episode, we'll be live again with a panel discussion about scratch building, kit bashing, and straight kit building. The show starts at 4 p.m. Pacific time, and we plan to go for about 60 to 90 minutes. This is a great opportunity for you to ask questions and get insight from some very knowledgeable people, so try not to miss it. If you enjoy these live shows, share them with your friends. Having as many live viewers, likes, and conversation in the live chat window helps to make it more visible on YouTube. And if you miss the show, don't worry. The goal is to share information, and whether it's viewed live or later, that information will still be there for you. On Saturday the 23rd, it's a how-to video about weathering with acrylics. This show features Jason Hill of Owl Mountain Models. Jason's another one of these guys who, yeah, he runs a manufacturing company and sells models, but he's also a hardcore modeler. He even has a blog about modeling. One of the best things about this program is that he shows very simple techniques that use very inexpensive materials to make a new model look like it's been well used and you don't even need an airbrush. This one's worth watching even if you have your own ways of weathering already. You're likely to learn something from Jason's techniques. And finally, on the 30th, it's the fifth Saturday of the month, which means there's a bonus program and it's gonna be a cab ride on Shea number one at Roaring Camp. This is something else you're not gonna see anywhere else. I attached my GoPro to the cab of the engine and recorded the trip from the top of Bear Mountain all the way down to the station at Roaring Camp. So, like I said, this is another one not to miss. So, these are all the scheduled programs. In addition to what I've mentioned here, I also have more products on deck for Product Spotlight and N-Scale Friday programs. 
as well as some stuff that I'd like to try and squeeze in on the Wednesdays toward the end of the month that are currently vacant in my calendar. So anyway, I want to invite you once again to become a member of the TSG train crew on Patreon. The Patreon page helps me bring the high quality content that you enjoy to the channel. And like I said earlier, once the support is high enough there, I'm planning to turn off all the ads on YouTube. So if you can help out with two bucks a month or more, head over to patreon.com slash TSG Multimedia and find out what kind of behind the scenes stuff the train crew enjoys. It's not much, but if enough people do it, it'll add up. You are the best viewers on YouTube, and I mean that. I want to wish you all a great Thanksgiving and also upcoming holiday season. And while I'm at it, I want to thank you all for your continued support. I'll see you next time.